As the final season of Game of Thrones airs on HBO, we are playing a brand new Game of Thrones game based specifically on the television series. It is called Game of Thrones Oathbreaker. It's a social deduction game for five to eight players in which you are trying to complete missions or perhaps fail them, depending on whether you are a loyalist to the king or a deceptive conspirator. Yes, in this game, it is decided who wins depending on which track is farther, the Order or the Chaos track. Now, to find out which one you care about, each player will be given one of the following cards, either a Loyalist or Conspirator. Conspirators want Chaos, Loyalists want Order. You can sort of tell by the colors. In addition to that, though, there is going to be secret personal goals. If you are unable to get these resources, even if your team wins, you will lose. So you'll have to keep an eye out for that. The way the game's going to work is most rounds, there'll be a certain number of missions. They'll look like so, which will have a symbol for pass and skull, meaning fail. And if it passes, you get those rewards. If you fail, you'll get the uh, that will occur. Now, what will happen is you have a hand of cards that have a mixture of either just... Ooh, <laughs> mine, mine went flying. <laughs> of either just basic symbols, one of either crown... Uh, raven, I guess. I can't remember if it was Raven or Crow. No ravens. Or Sword. One that will say, have a condition if, if it's either, if it is a mission that has that symbol, it's a success. If not, it's a failure. Or straight up failure symbols. And they can come in different values of, for example, that has three, it could be one. There's also wilds have all three symbols on there and multiple numbers, so you can keep an eye out for that. On your turn, you must play two of the cards in your hand. Uh, everyone starts with three, but there's a way to get bigger or smaller hand sizes. Once you play your cards, there's usually multiple missions, so you can play two on the same, one on each. You could play all three if you want. You put your token, your house sigil, on wherever you played the most cards. Tie you choose. At the end, once everyone's played cards, you will reveal. If there are more of the, that symbol than skulls, then the mission succeeds. Everyone who has a house sigil there gets the rewards there, and order or chaos will go up depending on which side uh, occurs. And those cards are shuffled, so you don't know who right. played what necessarily. In addition, once they're all played, they're discarded face down, so you don't n remember exactly about order and st things like that. You also can't say more besides, I'm helping, hurting, or nothing. For example, a crown card there doesn't really help either side. It's just nothing. So unless the card mission says otherwise, usually they're pretty basic. I think there's a couple that may add blindly, very similar to the Destiny deck from uh, Battlestar Galactica. And once you go through these rounds at the very end, you will see how everything totals up. You can see at the bottom of the track that these are the mission rounds, but every other round is going to be a decree round, and that's where the king comes in, because not all players are going to be playing cards on these missions. One person is going to be the king, and they have a very different role. They are obviously not a conspirator or a loyalist. They are definitely on the side of the king, because they are the king, and it is their job to figure out who is on their side or not, because they don't know. Now, during these decree rounds, they're going to have a hand of five decree cards, and they get to play however many there are for each symbol shown. They can play one decree card on each player, and once each player has one, then they can start doubling up. And the reason you want to play them is they're either going to be these black cards, which are suspicion, or if they're somewhere in the deck there, favor cards on people that you think are on your side. At the end of the game, you're going to be rewarded this number of points one way or the other if you guessed correctly. So you really want to make sure you play these cards on people you trust and these on people you don't. They also have their own abilities, so as soon as you play them, they have things that may change what they're doing that round, how they play. For instance, they might have to play their cards face up. Uh, they might have to make a choice choice that relates to the order and chaos. They might get to draw cards, all, all kinds of things that the king can let them do. Some of them, as these, are only for that next round. Some of them are permanent. For example, one is if for each time that the house sigil is on a successful mission, order goes up in addition. And maybe sometimes you don't want to play that on someone you think is right. Maybe that ability works really well to sort of force that person be a bit more careful 
or annoying. And at the very end, because there's different numbers too, so if it's a low number, it's not going to hurt you too bad if you guess wrong. Right. You want to be careful because, you know, I think some of the high ones, like you have a four, you really want to make sure you play that on someone you definitely know is a bad guy. Uh, so the king kind of has their own thing going on where they're really playing this logic deduction game and everyone else is concentrating on missions and playing the right symbols. They also have their own individual player powers, uh, a variety of different types. These are all double-sided, so you can choose different characters with different powers and those cost cubes so you have to also manage your resources in terms of using these powers but not negating your your, your win condition your, your win personal conditions. Win conditions yes your personal win conditions with how many cubes you want finally there's one major thing the king has to do at the end of the game not only is he sort of guessing with these cards he's going to each person say i think you're a loyalist or i think you are a conspirator for each one he gets right uh, the, if we're right, he gets order going up by three, regardless of what so team they were on. But if he's wrong, then chaos goes up by three. So he's going to have to be watching everyone, seeing how he thinks they're playing. If they're like, oh, that guy seems to be playing more for himself, or is that person really trying to help? by seeing how many cards they place on which missions, if they pass or fail, things like that. And of course, you know, while you're not supposed to talk about specifics of what cards you're playing, you're free to say, I think that person's evil. I definitely, based on what I've noticed, I, they're not on our side. And the king has to decide who do they believe, who do they think is actually lying or telling the truth. Uh, depending on player counts, you may also have an agent card, which is uh, a way that, so you don't know exactly what the distribution is of loyalists and conspiracy and that might have an effect on the score at the end of the game. Uh, you can also have a variant where there's a king and a queen, uh, but they could be either gender, just what they're called, mm -hmm. where two people take the king role and are kind of working together, uh, which is another interesting thing. Uh, so that's what it is. It, you guys, you can see, it's very much based on the show. It just uses still photos from the show for, for the artwork, uh, which I think, you know, it looks fine here. I think I think it does the job well. The the iconography is fairly clear in terms of what symbols need to play and everything like that. Yeah, in terms of these deduction games, it's actually I think closest one is Bang that I would think of, but I like better. Partly because every time we've played Bang, uh, Jonathan, you get eliminated very early on. <laughs> well, yeah, Bang is player. I mean, there's a whole host of reasons Bang isn't in that good, <laughs> in my opinion. But uh, I, yeah, in terms of the fact that you have two different sides and you, there's one kind of leader that you're supporting. And everyone knows of. He's not a hidden role. Right, right. Yeah, Compared I definitely like, agree. You know, Avon, even like Werewords, where there is that mayor, his role is still hidden beyond that because he could still be werewolf or not. Yeah, but certainly I, probably the people watching, I know we have played many of these games like Bang, The Resistance, Werewolf. This is definitely one of those. I think what uh, changes it up, first of all, the, the king role is very different because they're just kind of almost playing a different game, I think, than everyone else. What's crazy about the king is most of these games, you, I mean, a, a, unless you're Merlin <laughs> in Avalon, you're really trying to guess what everyone's roles are and you're just like, uh, I'm pretty sure he's good. The king, however, it's like, I need to be sure he's good because that's that's a six point differential in us or not six I think maybe but then the three points the swing because if I guess wrong or even more if I depending on what cards I play from the decree deck, you know. That can decide the winning. Yes, there is a lot riding on the king. They really, really need to be sure about their guesses. So uh, it, it can be challenging. So you're reading logic, but also you know social cues. And again, who you believe, who you trust is what they say to you. Uh, so it's a tough job. Uh, whereas for conspirators, for the most part, you're just trying to mess things up and confuse people. You don't. You're, there's not as much uh, riding on your what you do in the game. I think, and I think that's the other thing that uh, separates this game a little bit is most like in resistance for example that kind of resembles this mission scheme where in resistance you simply play a pass or a fail here it's not that simple uh, there is a little bit more going on where you also have to decide which place do you bet on that you think is going to win because you want the reward for it uh, as well as you know there are slightly different cards like you might want to play this if you're a bad guy that changes it up well you actually might not have a choice you when I, have a one of the times I was the loyalist I had multiple times my hands were just skulls yeah that can happen because 
You're just, you only have three cards each turn unless you have a special ability of some kind or effect played on you. So yeah, you might end up as a bad guy with only good cards, or you might even like have this great, oh, these are great for uh, a sword mission, but maybe only Raven missions came out. So even though it's neutral, it's- And you have to play two. That's yeah, you have thing. to play at least two. So you can't just say, no, I, I can't play anything. I don't want to hurt anyone. You really got to go in there, which uh, I think is important because otherwise maybe it would, I think for one side or the other, it, it would be too easy or to say, oh, well, they're not playing anything. I mean, if you were a bad guy, you would almost maybe just never play anything because if there's nothing playing or on if, something, it's, if it wins. you happen to play all Monk card and it's all skulls, it's more obvious because you didn't have to play skulls. Right, right. It, it muddies the waters enough that it, there's a plausible deniability there, but it can be frustrating if you're if you're if you get just the opposite of what you want, and you're like, oh, great, everyone's yeah. gonna think I'm a bad guy. It can really be. There's also kind of an interesting layer, I think, of counting, <laughs> which doesn't sound that interesting, <laughs> but trying to figure out based on where these are on the track and which cards are where, and trying to predict. It can. It's not always obvious who is in the lead. Uh, where you know, like again, going back to resistance, it's well, we've passed two missions or we or, or however many you need. So obviously, good guys are almost close to winning. In this, it's not always that clear, which can be interesting. We had one game, I think. Chaos was at 30 and Order was only at 10. Order still won. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it can really swing like that, especially with the with the king making if they make the right calls. Uh, so overall, I mean, it, I would say if you like Game of Thrones, the theme isn't that strong. I mean, it's cool to see the characters. I would say if you like the tension, I right. guess, of in terms of backstabbingness and trust, then yeah, it gets that across. That's it's not true. The, it's not the military part it's or the, fantasy. It's the, yeah, it, it makes you feel like you're on that show from its mechanics, but I don't think that in terms of like the flavor, it's not like, oh, this power makes perfect sense for Cersei or something like that. Uh, but uh, I think it's enough just to, just to see it. And, and it also it makes it an easy introduction for people so they know like, I'm the king, that this person is going to betray that person. You kind of get a headspace of what type of game this is. Uh, but if you like social deduction games, I found that this one really did something a little bit different. Uh, I, like you said, it's the first reading it, I was like, oh, kind of sounds like Bang, but way, way, way better than Bang, I think. I While I think the king's role makes it almost a little too important at times, it feels, mm. it's still, as easy, I think for a social deduction game, I've never felt more tense. <laughs> wow, that's saying a lot. <laughs> I think in a good way, because it's something you should want in a game like this because it feels a bit more like, oh, whether you're the king or not, you know, just how do I make sure he, because if I'm good or bad, I those favorite cards can really help push points in both ways. Like, how can I make sure he either matches or doesn't match me? Yeah, it really does feel like a puzzle, a very interesting deduction logic puzzle that's, that's unique. Now it's time for our crits and misses for Game of Thrones Oathbreaker. Crits. The game provides two unique perspectives, that of the players and the king, so depending on which role you're in, you're trying to accomplish something different to determine what roles everyone else is playing, whether they're on your side or not as the king, or if you're a player, to simply throw the king off. Most social deduction games, even if they have different roles, all still play the same because the king is so different. It really does make things fun when you switch it up. Gameplay is engaging because as a player or the king, you're really required to pay attention to other players on their turns, trying to piece together what you think they're doing and who you can trust. This makes for a very dynamic game because you are always keeping track of everyone else. Because as the king, you want to make sure your decree cards are matched up with the right player's allegiance. And as a player, you want to make sure you are acting in a way to make sure you get the, the decree cards you want whether you're on the order of loyal or conspirator, to make sure you get those extra points in the last round. It's not always obvious which side is in the lead. Scores can flip drastically as the game goes on, especially towards the end, but if you feel like things aren't quite balanced for one side or the other, there are optional rules in the book to change things up. Misses. A lot of the points seem to really rely on that last round. It makes it seem like the king is really deciding how the game is going to end. 
The king's role is extremely important. So when playing, you want to make sure that you have someone who understands the rules and is probably preferably a good player if you're on the good side as the king. There can be a lack of agency with the other players, especially those who are loyal. Because if you keep getting bad tenants of skulls, you can feel like you're only hurting instead of being able to do anything to actually help the game. Outside of a few special powers or decree cards that might give you a fighting chance in those situations, it can be very frustrating if you feel helpless that you just don't have any way to do what you want to do on your turn. The personal goals that require cubes does make things a little bit more interesting, but it does cause a certain conundrum where the cubes also are for abilities. Because you want them to win the game, you don't spend them on abilities as much, and they're already hard to come by because you only get them a few per mission, and that's assuming if you win them usually. So we don't usually see as many abilities hitting the field as one would hope. It may have been the intention of the design that you only use your abilities when you really need them, but what I found in our games was that everybody just kind of got the cubes they needed and then hung on to them for dear life, and I think it would be more interesting if some of those character abilities would come into play more often. There are many social deduction games out there, and the one that first came to mind was Bang, because similar to that, that has the sheriff, who everyone knows about. This time it's the king. I like this one a lot better, because there isn't the player elimination, which I have found to be more harmful than good the few times we've played, uh, the many different versions of it. Mm -hmm. And because of the way the points work at the end, while we thought it was a little hurtful, because it does seem that the king has the most sway, which I guess makes sense he's king, it does mean everyone's paying attention to be like, all right, if I, I, I think, you know, Will's put a lot of cards on this mission and, and he doesn't have much cubes. He probably really wants those coins. Yeah, and as a player, you're, you're, you know, you're even more so thinking, like, if you're on the good side, you really are wanted to convince the king that because you, you might be the person, the only person who can help them, <laughs> you know, because you know how important they are. So, yeah, there's a, there's a very interesting dynamic there. I think I certainly... From playing both sides, I liked being the king a lot more. I don't know about you. Did you have a preference? I don't know, because all these <laughs> social deduction games are not my forte. Uh, I usually like getting the peasant role that I can wear and stuff, because that means I don't have to do anything. I do think that it depends on the people you play with, too, you know, uh, how conniving they are. But I think I probably enjoy the players a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Not too much. Like, I think both are still strong. Uh, maybe it's just because I like the characters. Yeah, I mean, I, I like. I found that the, being the king. First of all, I just felt it was more. It was a lot different from most other uh, social deduction games. Uh, and for this, you know, you're deciding which symbols to play, which which was a fine. But as the king, like having to really pay attention, and I felt like I was no, like, exactly. solving That's this grand puzzle. Why I think it it does Depends stand on above with a lot of other uh, the social games. Mm -hmm. This is we didn't put this as a miss, by the way, because I think it's if you're doing a social game, it's almost like a given. But we actually had our hard time at first when we got this because it requires minimum of five, <laughs> and right. we always had the like all of a sudden people were missing, and we only had three or four or something, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's you know it's it's one of, it's like the same thing with resistance or bang. You really you want you want a larger yeah. group definitely. Just, just a funny thing that happened to <laughs> us. So we, we didn't think we'd have such a hard time. <laughs> yeah, I do think though that uh, unlike like resistance, for instance, you can play it with five, but I wouldn't really want to. I think this works fine with a smaller player count. Maybe because it's so much relies on actually guessing right. It's not just being like, yeah, that's probably a, a, a spy. Yeah. You're like, I really hope it's a spy because I'm giving you a four-point card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I will say, in our last two games, the Kings, who were us in the last two, <laughs> uh, did guess correctly with the four-point one, which helped a lot. Yeah, guessing, yeah, and guessing, and guess everybody right. We're good kings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, hey, have you maybe played Game of Thrones Oathbreaker if you're watching this? It may not be widely available to the public yet, so maybe uh, you are just excited to get your hands on it when it does come out. Uh, we want to hear from you what you think about this game in the comments section below. Uh, by the way, if you are worried, uh, I don't believe there are any spoilers in this game other than maybe some minor uh, screenshots that might give away a couple scenes but I don't think if you haven't seen the show it would be anything that you could understand. Yes I'm pretty sure there are parts of characters who are both alive and dead so it's not like they only use those who are still alive in the season if you are that far behind. <laughs> yeah I mean you could also like the king doesn't get a character so it could be anyone someone anyone could be the hand of the king it's all over the place. <laughs> uh, talk to us down there. But until then I'm Will. I'm Jonathan and this has been a Roll for Crit Review. 
Hey, if you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like this video for more excellent board game content. Heck yeah.